Welcome to the dark side of the projectors or the light side of the TVs. But one thing is for sure, this small remote control is going to control them all. This is Sofa Baton. And it doesn't matter if it's a light room or a dark room. This remote control can control and will control everything. And I love it. Probably you'll like it. We're going to take a good close look at this smart remote control to rule them all. Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I just wanted to be sincere more. So I just st sit right in front of my TV unit with the remote box that I need to create over a long time use and the solution for it that came from Sofa Baton. And I made a couple of short videos. This is a single remote controller that can probably control everything in the same room. And probably if you connect Bluetooth devices, you can control the devices out of that room. So it pretty much can control really anything. So let's start with the topic of remote problem and how this device solves it. By, by the way, I just wanted to keep this video as short as possible. So you're going to see how I installed it and how easy it is to tune it up and solve some of the problems that I had with my TV. And not much of a big problem, by the way. Yeah, you have to remap couple of the keys if uh, the model that you choose on the base software doesn't match exactly but it's taking a couple of minutes just one or two minutes up top so you're going to witness how this can be used this video will be containing my review and my overall conclusion I just don't want the things to get uh, along the way so first thing is first the TV remote this is an air controller remote and this is LG QNET 81 2023 model TV and it's a good TV but this is a thick remote control you know how slim this is this is two times thicker and this is two times thinner and thinness or coolness of this remote control is not the only thing you're going to see the close-ups while I talk about it probably around somewhere but this is the TV remote this is the Epson LS300 projector remote this is the vivid storm alr screen remote and if you haven't checked my channel the screen is between tv and the projector and it rise up so i have a screen remote i have a dedicated tv uh, box remote because if i wanted to use this device this projector with a bigger screen like 100 120 with an alr so i need to connect the tv box to it so i have a tv box here right now it's not connected but i have a tv box here and here it is this is the tv box so i have to connect this uh, to this remote controller to control it any other stuff like i have philips hues around in this room somewhere and I can control open them and close them up with this same single sofa baton remote. So the coolness and single unit is not the only thing. One other thing of the remote problem is the battery. For example, this device has two AAA batteries. This device, Vivid Storm LR screen uh, remote control, believe me, this is an RF, by the way, not infrared. So it's I don't have to put it just to a sensor it just feels the RF signal and just opens up but this remote controller is working with 2036 CR which means lithium ion a lithium battery like a rounded uh, some of them might be used in the watches smart watches a car keys so it's not easy to find this thing's battery it long it lasts long, don't get me wrong. I'm very happy with the remote and they're feeling premium. But the issue is, it's difficult to find when, when you are depleted from the battery. So the Epson has also two AAA batteries. This, many of the TV remote controls use still two A batteries and AA batteries are big, like my finger thickness. So this is why these remotes are tech. Sofa Baton has lithium ion battery inside and it is quite a bit of thin, like my um, thinner than my 
little finger. So by the way, it's quite thin and it's looking quite elegant. While I talk about it, you're going to see the close-up shots around it. So it has the same tactile feeling of a PS4 or 5 controller or many of the you know, high-end mouse touch feedback on it. When you hold it with your hands, you know you are holding something premium. And over the buttons, the feeling is quite good. And we have a backlit. By the way, I hit the back button of the TV. I will show you in a bit how this really works and don't get me wrong you're going to see another video how this thing really works in the tutorial mode but you're going to see some close-up close up shots and you're going to see some sections in this video but I don't want to keep this video too long so right now I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use everything with a single remote first thing is first you got an LCD screen here and a back button. Right now I'm controlling TV, LG QNET 80 fun that I've, you know, put the name on it. I'm in the control of it. I hit, I hit the home button, everything works. I can change the menu. As you can see, it works quite fast. And if I hit the settings menu, settings just automatically opens. I can control anything. So if I want to power, power it off, I have LCD mode here. The one thing is for sure, they can't put every button like a dedicated remote control like Numbers and also the Netflix or Disney Plus or Alexa kind of like buttons. So if they do, this remote will be looking like, you know, everything put in one place, quite ugly. So this is like an Apple style, stylish, cool, elegant design. So uh, your functions in, in is in the LCD screen defined, like Numbers are in also with the LCD screen. You're going to see all this in a close-up in another section of the video, but I'm just going to talk through uh, while I talk generally. So if I want to change the source, okay, I hit it, I go up the Vivid Storm, and if I hit up button, Vivid Storm screen opens. I don't have to take my hand, another remote, open anything else. So that's easy and convenient. And it, I can just change to the Epson, and if I hit Epson, again, I got a power button here. When I hit power button, Epson just starts. And how crazy is that? Like, I, I, in a second, I change the device. And again, I'm going to close the Epson, okay? I'm going to redo it in the same time. I close the Epson, hit the back button, go to the Vivid Storm, hit the lower button. And meanwhile, it, when it goes down, while it's going down... I change it to the LG so I can control the TV in seconds. So I can change the hue, Philips hue. I can change it to control to the air conditioner uh, up top on the ceiling. And if you have smart lights around instead of Philips hue, you can also control many of the Bluetooth stuff. And Bluetooth stuff, some of the time, out of the room. Like you got 15 meters of distance for the Bluetooth device. So if you have a dedicated device like, a, let's just say, uh, Dolby Digital or DTS or THX, whatever, the uh, amplifier, okay, for audio purposes, like a couple of speakers and properly tuned up cinema setup, you can use the IR sensors inside. You can put the controller up top. It doesn't matter where it is, actually. You got two of IR sensors. My IR sensor is looking at the TV, and if you have dedicated devices, you can put the cable, just one cable, at the back of your TV console and inside of the unit, what you want to control. So you can control a couple of receivers. You can control, uh, like I told you, like you can have a couple of TV receivers, uh, cable TV receivers, satellite receivers, or um, Apple TV or Android box in the same place. You can go back, switch even an NVIDIA Shield. So it doesn't matter what you have inside. You ha if you have a dedicated setup just behind this, you can control it by just lowering the, one of the sensors at the bottom. And the Bluetooth won't be a problem. So if they are working with the Bluetooth, for, for example, the Epson is working in the Bluetooth, no problem there. You can control probably 80, 90% of the, maybe even more, 90, 95% of the Bluetooth smart uh, Android TVs and also the projectors as well. So it, they are, on their side, it's quite easy. 
uh, the only thing that you would be missing is, might be missing, is if you're an air mouse kind of like person, this device doesn't have air mouse kind of like function. But is it, a, you know, important stuff for me? I never use it. And I use TV and sometimes it just messes up like how I do things. And my mom also doesn't love it. My wife doesn't love it. So it's up to you. Like if you are playing too much of a game with the air mouse on the TV, uh, it might be an option for you. But for me, I have the convenience of everything in a single remote. So this device solves my box full of problem. I have remotes, I have cables. So I'm going to put many of these devices under the bed like or under some sort of storage area so i'm going to keep just one or two remotes in case i need their custom buttons to inside of a tv unit and forget all about them so i'm going to live happily ever after hopefully with a single remote although this video is sponsored and they've sent me this device I should mention there are always positives and negatives. S some of the things that you might be wondering, uh, how you're going to hit the numbers because it doesn't have any numbers on it. Like I said, if they have the numbers and any kind of like shortcuts, this uh, device will be huge. So what they have done, they put the things inside of a menu. So if you hit the button from the menu, you got a good LCD screen and you're going to see it in a section that I explain the LCD and how it performs. For me, having the backlit in the darkroom and also the convenience of the easy of use and the software. One more important thing is, if you have the smartphone with you, okay, let me just open up my smartphone. I'm not going to sure it's going to show you or not, but if I hit the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi opening and go to the app of Sofa Baton, and I'm going to at least show you something like this, okay? It looks like this. It's quite simple. And if I hit it back, I can choose different devices from their app. Right now, it's trying to connect again the last time that it, you know, did. But basically, it connects in the same time. Sofa Beton, yes, it found the hub. And let me just show you, it found the devices. So how cool is that? Like, I have like my devices, I can add them very simple and it just syncs just takes a couple of seconds to sync this device and you're going to see the device list in the same screen by the way if you don't even have the remote or in the charge while the sofa baton is in the charge as a device you can use it with the app yes you really can like for example if i hit the epson okay if i hit here if i can hit the power button okay right now Epson is opened. I have to really open up the VividStorm to show you the Epson is working. You might be seeing this outside of TV, but Epson is really working. So I can control it. If I hit OK, VividStorm ALR also stops. So I can control everything with the app. If this device is on the charge, you can control anything with the app. And also you can re-adjust uh, the keys if you really need it, like configuration, you hit the details. Sorry, not the details, but uh, edit button. And you see add and repair commands. So if you have any problem on the commands, which I lived with the TV, okay, just experience two buttons. Uh, sorry, single button. Return button didn't work exactly, and the up button didn't work. But lately, uh, I just found out another TV model that suits my TV more. <laughs> So the up work and the return button or a backspace button didn't work. So I go to the add and repair command button. You're going to witness all this in the detail tutorial and change it. And it's easy. It's taking from the cloud. So you don't have to look for TV model or anything. You just have to find something generic and you just need to adjust it accordingly. So it's easy and convenient. For me, it took about half hour to just gather everything watch the tutorials, understand the device. If you're good with electronics, you're not going to lost too much of a time on installation. It's quite easy. So solving everything with a single remote. That's, I think, so far beta. So I just want to wrap this up. I'm using S22 Ultra 
Samsung, but you can use it with App Store. So you get, if you got an iPhone, no problem there. So you really can control anything and the box content you're going to see in a bit. I just gave my conclusion over. This is not a cheap device, so nothing qu uh, quite a bit of good uh, solution like this will be cheap. But considering what this can do, and it's a single unit, piece of art looking, good feeling device with the lithium ion internal batteries, it will just, you know, you're going to be get rid of the problem of batteries of each remote. And you're not going to think about, hey, my batteries is running out or is it a good condition? Kind of like problems won't be happening for you on a long time if you're going to use this because you're going to see the battery level on the screen of this device LCD. So, is there anything I'm missing? Well, I guess not. And you just have to protect it from kid your kid if you have kids and you just need to put it somewhere safe uh, because if you're using this kind of cool uh, LCD screen device uh, the only thing that I'm worrying about it's not going to be dur durable like these devices like these are more simple so these don't have LCDs so if you have an LCD even if you have a good cover this, this tactile feeling don't get me wrong everything is correct so the only thing that, uh, that's going to be leaving to you this device control everything, but you have to protect it from the kids if they're throwing too much. Other than that, I guess you don't have, you're not going to have a lot of problems. And if I'm going to say anything like minus, it could have been better. Yes, seeing your own TV models and getting updates might be better, but they are trying to upgrade everyone and then so if you're going to upgrade the pro software you're going to have probably a lot more products and it's easy to solve like many of the LG WebOS TVs are using the similar commands many of the projectors have been decades using the similar commands many of the Android devices have been using the similar command so if you have the base covered with the standard device you're not going to have problem to you know adjust a couple of buttons it's not going to take too much of a time and the rest of the video, you're going to see the box content of this device, box and close-up shots. Other than that, if you have questions, you can ask it to me. And one more thing, I think if I'm remembering correctly, Logitech is out of the business from the fully smart controllers. And you don't have too much of a good alternatives like this out there. So there are alternatives, but this is a good one. Considering price, this delivers what it should be delivering and yeah, it's going to solve my problems. I hope to see you in the next video. You can check back at the Sofa Baton products at the comment section below. The most important part, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and hit the like button. This is my hobby channel. I don't get too much of a pay out here. And I'm shooting these videos late at night. Right now it's 12 and a half late at night. My kids are in sleep. My family is in sleep, but still. I'm trying to create content as much as possible. And I hope to see in the next video, I will be leaving you with the box content. And in the end of the video, don't skip. You can go back and in, uh, check the installation, how this really works and kind of like a tutorial level. By the way, Sofa Baton has also their own uh, tutorials. So you won't be missing too much of a thing out if you haven't watched my you know, tutorial video. Hope to see in the next video. Bye from Home Cinema and take a view. I know I said this video won't be long, but I just wanted to show you close-up shots. So this is a close-up shot at home and this device is tin and quite good looking. When you look at this, you're going to see how it works. Let me just hit a button. So you got a screen of choice. Right now, three devices is connected and you can connect, like I told you, uh, air conditioner, also, you can control your sound system with a stereo or Dolby Digital Amplifier. You can add anything even with the Philips Hue. I'm going to add everything later on and shoot short videos. So if I choose TV, okay, later on, I have the option. You can go back to TV and like anything else, I'm just trying to go manage the TV. And if I hit settings button, it really works. So everything works perfectly.
fine. Let's just open up the YouTube for you. It's, there is nothing interesting there, but it's working as you can see. So I'm going to go back, hit the home button. So again, I'm going to just scroll. Changing the source is that easy. So it's one of the things that like you don't have to go here and hit the back button. I'm going to go with this, you know, wheel and hit the vivid storm and vivid storm is right now on i'm going to hit the up button so that's how easy it is maybe you haven't realized it while i talk about the actual process on the large shot but still it works if i hit center button it stops if i hit up it goes up so let's change the source to epson and when i go to the epson I don't have the ability to control power here because there is no power button, but everything lights up. So I can go back and forth and the color buttons and also home and setting buttons. So the Bluetooth controller of the Epson works in the detail. So let's go back. By the way, I can control the Epson as well. So you can see I am controlling the Epson now. What I'm going to do is show you the details of the menu. So you got like power, okay? Or if you're going to control the TVs, like numbers that you can click with the, uh, this button of scroll, and uh, we can call it. So app button, arrow down, left, right. So you got like all these buttons also configured in here. We got backspace button, cancel button, and also we got, you know, down arrow, escape button, and a lot of stuff. So what I'm going to do, go up, okay. I'm going to hit power so as you can see the projector is closed okay so projector is closed now so what I'm going to do is in this point I need to in this point I need to go back button and change the source to vivid storm and hit the down button and that's it the vivid storm is going down this is how easy and how convenient it is to use the device like this so and last thing i am staying with my tv and it's right now connected to tv so i can connect anything so that's about it when i when i hit the tv by the way if you're wondering what kind of shortcuts for the tv i got everything 3d amazon closed application favorite if i hit exit i want to see what happens it's not going yeah out of the smart input input in line i like yes as you can see right now i can change it to yes by the way i've just i can play with the sound and the tv is open with the trt world so everything worth working perfectly fine if i go up i just want to show you how numbers are working so if i decided to put a channel of Yes, you hit the OK button. It's not going to work like the regular TVs, numbers, and automatically waiting. You have to hit the OK button once you do. Let's just show it to you. 20, 9, and hit OK. And we are at TRT World again. So it's quite easy. That's how it is. I think a lot of people will like, a lot of people will choose this sort of device. Uh, instead of their regular remotes. So this section is over. In this small section of the video, I'd like to talk about the screen of this device. In some places in the video, I, I probably mentioned it was an LCD screen, but this is an OLED screen and it's kind of like why it is so bright and vivid and sharp. So even though we are seeing text and small icons that we can choose, this feels like a quite a bit of good quality screen so behind the remote control right now you're witnessing a 4k 120 hertz tv and even then you can see clearly see everything and how sharp and bright it is and by the way you're seeing the buttons lit up so you're not going to have any problems to see the buttons where you hit and how you control since these two buttons doesn't even need anything to you know connect so you know where the places are 
up, down, left, right, and the scroll is quite easy to understand. You're going to only look at the screen, this screen, and it's quite a good looking screen if you ask me. So in this video, I just want to make clear, this is an OLED, pretty good screen. In this part of the video, I'd like to take a look at the box content and the box itself. So for Bayton logo, we see it. We see the remote control, which we're going to witness in a second. And we see the control unit. X1 smart remote, it says. Around the page, we got App Store and Google Play apps. And the uh, QR codes for that. And at the back, we see 5 volt, 2 amperes and USB Type-C charging, with we, which we will be, you know, using Wi-Fi, BGN, 2.4 gigahertz, and oh, every kind of like standard, and Bluetooth, also 3.5.0, infrared, and we got also. So all these things will make you uh, use any kind of device compatible with uh, let's just count down the numbers 500,000 plus devices all in one customized activity hub mobile infrared IR blaster and 60 day working time 60 day working time is something important for a lot of people so the box quality is quite good when you open it up you got a user manual here adding a new device video tutorial it's good also we got lots of video tutorials i'm showing you because it is important to place the main unit and also try to add another sensor like this as you can see here if it's a closed or open tv unit kind of like place ir blasters are important with infrared controllers so you have to place them this is very important before using it at least you should generally read user manuals and this is our remote so the moment of goodness take a look at this this looks quite cool tactile feeling all over the place it feels like a playstation 4 or 5 gamepad when you touch it it needs to be this is a high-end product but still having this touch and i touched it before so that's why my fingerprints are there if you're wondering so for Bayton logo everything is matte finish so this is not something it will be uh, you know slipping from your hand and the knob is like a golf ball surface take a look at this golf ball surface unit and it is also acting like a click and also roll up take a look at this if you add a device have you seen anything like this activities you know devices and set we got LCD screen monochrome LCD screen and also the control buttons I think with my smaller hands even my small hands it looks cool and balanced that's what it's important for a remote control and at the bottom we have type C so you're charging from type C what else do we have other than this underneath we need to have some sort of sensor right so the basic X1 smart, uh, smart remote, set up the new hub, all devices, in, add the devices in the app, create new activity, sofabaton.com. So we have the rest of the unit here. This is the control unit, which is the most important part of this setup. I'm just opening up with you. So this is the main event we are controlling through this so look looks gorgeous even with my light set up it looks gorgeous quite a bit of build quality looks so you can hang it on a wall or some sort of uh, place that you have screws so you can mount it on i don't want to make too much of a fingerprints we got the specs here 5 volt 2 amps and we have the type c one two infrared controls probably or the controllers and here is our power button and that's about it i think it looks gorgeous and with the remote control the combination is great by the way if you're wondering why i, I didn't remove this just take a look at this i remove it with you so some people like this so right now it just becomes pure black and when I hit the button, it looks gorgeous. With the control unit, they, they both look gorgeous. So, other than that, what do we have? We have Type-C cable, 
type R to type C, type A to type C, type A to type C again. A power adapter, which I need a converter because I'm living in Turkey. We use Europe plugs, but it doesn't matter. I got other adapters as well. So we got sensors here and here. Two sensors here. I guess one sensor here, which makes it three different sensors that I got to be able to use it. I believe the Bluetooth will be internal. These are for infrared controllers. So that's the box content. So let's continue through the rest of the video. Out of the video, I am inside of the app uh, or user manual app page. And what I'm going to do for the Google Play, I will just click the store link. So it will direct me so of Bayton Smooth Remote. So I can install it, hit the install button. And in the rest, I will use the application to create an account. So continue. Let's open up the app. We're going to see the Sofa Baton logo. That's normal. And I'm going to create an account or you continue it using Google account. As part of the video, I'm going to screen record again for you to see what I see. Right now, we are in the mode of connecting to a hub. So we got two options, set up a new hub or connecting to a hub. Uh, I'm going to do a new hub. And as you can see right now, it's connected to the power uh, input from adapter. And I'm going to get close to the device. Is it blinking? Let me just, what it says, three seconds. Yes, I'm pushing to it. I'm waiting for it. Yes, it start blink. So the blue indicator hub is blinking. I click that button and I hit next. So Sofa Baton wants to access the, you know, many of the apps does for the location. Only this time or while using the app, okay, find the connected determined relative position of nearby devices, allow, so it will check. Right now the model that I got is Sofobaton X1 and I found the hub. By the way, my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is open. So I got the Wi-Fi network here. I'll try to connect with the password that I got. Entered the Wi-Fi password. Provision is OK. So it is confirming the Wi-Fi connection like the many of the smart devices such as smart vacuum cleaners uh, or smart network devices like Govi light setups. It has to connect the network and connect the device in the same time to control many devices possible. So I hit OK and I guess everything seems fine. So we are connected to the hub. Let's connect it to the hub X1 and start connecting. Yes, let's see what it's going to do. Okay, connection succeed. Okay, we can call it X1 hub, no problem. We can save it. Okay, part of the video, I'd like to completely show you how the software beta installation works this is the interface of the software and it's quite easy once you're logged in with your uh, created account you hit plus icon right now i'm going to uh, first work with my tv lg qnet uh, 65 qnet 81 series and i'm I, i've chose infrared you can control some of the tvs and my tv included with bluetooth but i'm going to choose infrared because the sensor is closed and i am okay with the basic functions and let's start learning or searching searching is easy for me i can go lg and i'd like to go a little bit low on the choices uh models are ultra hdr so which means 4k okay i'm going to try to find something about yes 65 inch go below uh, 49 nano 85 nano tvs are quite like my tv so it's not actually uh, has to work exactly so i will be checking this let's see the arrow up button is it working with my tv i can click and test so i can go back button i can go ok button i can go home button okay right now the home button is working and the up and down seems working everything seems working left and right 
So every action, I can see it on my TV screen. That's okay. Power off on these are generally okay. I'd like to go inside of a menu from left and right. Let me just try that because this is the most important part. I will go right again and on the right. I will hit the app with the OK button. I am inside the Amazon right now, Amazon Prime. And I'd like to go back. Let's hit the back. Yes, everything works. So this fits my TV in the detail menu. Let's hit the menu. I'm trying everything and everything work, works. Then I hit next on the top. And I'd like to write my TV's name. LG 65Q Ned. 81. This is my TV name and the icon seems okay for me. So this is the first device that I am set up in. Right now it's uploading the settings to the main unit probably or downloading the stuff. I'm not sure what it does but it does the magic happening. So the first device is easy. So I'm going to by the way and I'm going to open up the projector so I can choose the projector settings I need to of course rise up my screen to see stuff meanwhile all these things are happening and I'm not making this speed up version of video okay this is the exact time this device is setting to do so you can set it up like six uh, depending on what you have of course five to ten minutes up top so it's quite easy with the installation and with the configuration files being going back and forth. So everything will be set in this amount of time. So first device is complete. So go to the next one, add another one. You know by now I have a Wi-Fi control, Hue Bridge, Philips Hue Bridge. When I hit that, it says to me, you should be clicking at the bottom uh, button on the up. I am hitting the button right now. As you can see, it's so... Uh, so I'm going to change it to the LED lamp icon. So that's okay for me. So Philips Hue is right now installing another device. This is finishing faster as you can see. So I'm glad. So this is basically very easy and everything works perfect. Then you can change the name and configure everything. So one other thing, Bluetooth controller, because my Epson projector is an Android projector android tv so i'm going to hit android tv okay so i'm going to change it to let's just try to find this looks like a projector at the bottom and i'm going to hit complete so by the way i'm going to do some stuff in the remote control and the menu uh, remote accessories menus of my projector i'm going to try to find sofa baton and yes let's try to add accessory by the way it's going to this part of the video might not be seemingly easy for you to see this things happening at the back i am in the meantime adding accessory mode to my epson ls300 Right now the code base is downloading, so nothing to worry there. Let me just show you, by the way, what happens. So once you choose Android TV, okay, you hit here. You see the remote control, very similar uh, with many of the Android remote control devices. What we're going to do is I'm going to hit the edit button. And here at the bottom, you see Bluetooth repairing uh, up top. To delete device so if i hit repairing again it's going to repair the devices and what i'm going to do is to show you what happens at the back if i can add just to go back meanwhile i need to go to the camera settings and right now the projector is in the pairing mode the remote accessories okay i hit add bluetooth accessory menu I see the sofa baton as you can see here. So I'm going to hit pair. I'm going to go back to sofa baton app. And it's right now says pairing. If I hit pair icon, it paired automatically. So let me just try it. If it's working, go to the Android TV, 
go to the back button, I'm hitting, everything works perfectly. So this device is also installed. What else do we have? I need to install my, uh, I guess it was like infrared or Wi-Fi. Let's just try to find, no, not Bluetooth, like I'm looking for vivid storm. Okay. I didn't find my vivid storm there. So let's go infrared or search V with storm. Vivid storm ALR. So common testing, okay? Projector. And it says keep the hub within the sight of the device. IR command will be sent to the hub. Okay. Navigate up. Test. Right now it's open, but still. Let's just say yes because it's up. Let's go hit down. You hear right now the noise of the vid storm. Let me just show you. Or at least think try to think to hear about it. I'm hitting the up. As you can see, you're hearing the noise of the vivid storm screen. So right now everything is perfectly matched and everything is work working, okay? So I've done, I guess I've finished it. Let me just check. Yep. No, I didn't hit the plus button. Sorry about that. Infrared searching. You know how easy it is? It's qu quite a bit of interesting to this easy. I'm really excited. Learning, testing. Okay. Projector, test. I'm going to hit yes. And hit the next button. Sorry. Right now it's Vivid Storm. Uh, my model is U S T A L R Pro 92 inch. My model is 92 inch, but you can write everything you want. So this is about it. And it's done. There's two, of course, commands like going up and back and stop. So everything is working correctly, but I can add huge amount of devices. Like if I hit, um, as you can see below here, it says only supports Roku, Sonos and Philips Hue. So I can add smart devices like Roku, Sonos and Philips Hue, and I can nearly add every Bluetooth device, remote control and infrared. This is the finish, the complete finish of my setup and how it works. And you can clearly see your activities here. By the way, if any device does not work, let me just show you an alternative scenario. If some of the commands for your TV or any kind of device doesn't work, what you should be doing, because it happened to me and I did it. Uh, I've come to my TV settings. Okay, you try every button here. And if it doesn't work, you go to the edit on the right up top corner. You add and repair command button. Once you are here, it will show you every command, as you can see right now, okay? And if there's a problem, in my earlier experience, I had problem at the, uh, at the back button. So if you go edit, okay, there are two options. Learn commands from original remote, which you have to put your remote up top of the main unit and push the button to give the remote the actual signal from your remote controller to make it learn that command. Or filter instructions cloud data. That's easy part. Here are two, 33 other alternative commands from other LG TVs. So I've sold it in less than 5 or 10 seconds. I just chose 1, 2, 3. And nearly in every occasion I sold my command. 3 to 4, uh, fourth command was solving my issue. So that is that easy if you have anything like you might not be seeing every kind of TV model in the index, but you can clearly edit later on and or teach the device. If you're going to teach it, it's going to take a little bit more, but if not, so it's, it is fast as five up top 10 minutes, depending on how much device you have like receivers and stuff. So this section is over. I hope you enjoyed.